So we are now recording. Um, welcome to the community call uh, for what? No, it's the 30th of April. Uh, where does the time go, as they say? Um, so welcome again. Uh, I'm Nicholas. I'm going to be driving the call today because that's just because no one else would volunteer for it. Um, and Martin, well done for being voluntold to do the notes keeping. <laughs> Uh, is it vol is vol is volun shamed a thing? Is that, is that, is that... <laughs> I don't know. Don't know. Uh, looking at the announcements, uh, there's nothing on the announcements uh, there. Um, so uh, we'll skip that. Everybody's been here before already, and there is only one agenda item. Um, so and that's me as well. So this feels like it's the Nicholas show, um, which it shouldn't be. Um, so after I've done my little two minute slot, I'll open the floor open for discussion um, where we can talk about general things. Otherwise, this can be a short meeting and we can just get on with our lives and do the things. So um, the agenda item, only agenda item is Docs update. So last week uh, was Docs week for the PyScript open source team. Uh, I just want to uh, acknowledge Andrea's exceptional work. Uh, honestly, uh, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Uh, but he managed to get through it and uh, submit uh, quite a number of pull requests and fill in a lot of things. Um, I've been making updates as well in a branch uh, that are more kind of... Uh, Imagine me as a teacher, if you will, with my red pen, and I'm just uh, I'm just making sure you know grammar and spelling and things are simplified. I'm taking out repetition. I'm making sure that cross references are all in place and things like that, so that the documentation hangs together um, as well. Um, yeah. So essentially, what Martin's written in the documentation, which is Nicholas and Andrea have been working on the docs, is basically all I wanted to say uh, today. Andrea and I. Um, uh, uh, worked through some of the plugins related stuff that wasn't clear. Uh, we think we've got that fixed and um, and that's it, really. Uh, I just need to finish off the um, editing of the FAQ and then we're good to push all of those. So that's it, really. Um, thank you very much, Andrea, for all, all that help. And uh, let's hope that we're ready for PyCon when hopefully we'll have a lot of people turning up at our documentation and it's clear about what they should be doing, how they can start, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So that's it. Any questions about that? Yep, Martin. <clears throat> no questions about that, but I was just going to say I was about to uh, volunteer Alex to do a quick walk through the new dashboard if that was something that would be worth looking at on PyScript.com would... as, as a demo. That would be perfect. Um, so in that uh, case, before we move, okay, yeah. Before we go there, Fabio, just just be to not to not close on the docs uh, and they reopen. Uh, do you? What do you all think? Uh, I was thinking about if you can do a quick like one paragraph summary of the or a change log on the docs so that to so that we announce to the community those are the changes that we made and stuff like that. Um, I idea. think it would be a good exercise or yeah. even actually 30 seconds or one minute video just going through, look, this, those are the changes we made, et cetera, et cetera. I hope yeah, yeah. like either, either, or that's, yeah. I think would be good. We're documenting the docs. Yep. Is what we're doing. So <laughs> documenting the change law, <laughs> the changes to the doc. Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'll make sure that that's done. Uh, I'll make sure that we announce it uh, on discord and so on and so forth. Um, reach out to Jeff as well because he's mentioned we make sure that he gets a lot of kudos in the docs as well because he does a lot of independent documentation work um, and I've just seen Fabio's cup, my gosh uh... <laughs> <laughs> either, fa either it's a very small cup or va Fabio's very large he's, he's the size of Godzilla, <laughs> didn't you know <laughs> you can see it's a very large cup so it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway. A small cup. <laughs> okay. If there's nothing else on the documentation, and we stop being silly, because uh, we, we're actually paid to do this, um, so let's be serious about this. Um, Alex, uh, the floor is yours. Show us the new um, dashboard, matey. Apologies for throwing that your way. 
Uh, that's fine. Then... No worries. Should I have, you should have apologized first, uh, Martin. <laughs> It was it was revenge for the minute taking thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so we made a couple of changes to the dashboard and just some 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 things overall, just to kind of improve the UI. Um, as you as you have more uh, projects, it can get kind of cluttered and a bit hard to see. Um, so let me just show you just to compare what it used to look like. See if this works. This should have the old one. Oh, that's not working. That's an old build. I was trying to see if I can get what it used to look like. But it used to be like that everything used to be very large and you take up a lot of the screen. And um so yeah, we did a we did some updates to add like a sticky header. Um we consolidated some of the cards and made them a little bit nicer to 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 look at and a little bit more clean. Um we added a list view as well. Um, you can sort by title um, and by modified, not by tag or description. Those won't work. Um, you can also do it up here if you'd like. So if you're on grid view, you can you can you can toggle it this way. Um, tags are clickable and it'll update the filter. So uh, if you click it again, or if you if you click another one, it'll just update that. If you click the same one. It'll remove it from the filter, or you can also just delete the filter uh, text. Um, what else? These have always been here, but they were kind of like up here with these other main navigation items, and we decided to move them down just to kind of separate them since this kind of didn't seem part of the main navigation. They're part of like a secondary navigation kind of. Um, I also updated that icon. Um, you can also find it up here. So if you're in mobile view, it'll be inside of here as well. Uh, what else did we add, Martin? Um, no, yeah, that's it really. Just like a cleaner look and little nice bits of juice that Alex has added. Like for example, when you mouse over a card now, so you get some idea of the card that you're selected on. So there's a nice little bit of shadow just to give you a very subtle, but nice little hint, which I really like when I've been using it already. Yeah, to, yeah. To me, I, I, I think Alex and Katie have done a great job on this because the old one looked it was just in my brain, like um, completely subjectively, was there was a lot of white space and it felt overbearing in some ways to my eyes. And this, I, I don't know, I think, I think it looks amazing. I think they've done a fantastic job. Thanks. Bravo, bravo. Yeah, yeah. excellent work, uh, Alex. Um, a couple of other things to point out as well. Uh, the, um, the added icon went away in favor of just clicking and things like this. Uh, the options to open uh, and add it, I think, are also available on the menu there. Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I think the edit needs to go on there as well, doesn't it? That was one thing we didn't get. We, that we yeah. Going. yeah, yeah. I think we discussed. Yeah, we discussed, but yeah, didn't make the change yet. Mm -hmm. And then. Like we added that small colored border on the left. Uh, we talked about actually adding some color scheme or a banner or something. For now, that's not in. But basically, we're thinking about ways we can use those small tricks to help distinguish between different cards. Because one of them, this this work is actually towards making things easier to see. Um, mm -hmm. and before it was really hard. Now it's a little better, but uh, yeah. Nice. <clears throat> so that's yeah. yeah. So that's using the invent. Yeah, looking at the invent app using the colors and the event logo on there. So yeah, that's all logo right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we were saying, uh, so not have the whole card clickable. Only have like a little edit button. No, 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 no. I I do think that's fine. Um, okay. But I just I'm just highlighting the difference to uh, compared to before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I still think the edit site should edit should be on the menu as well. But I still think the whole card should be clickable. It's like yeah. just so that there is some element of discoverability on it. Okay. Yeah, I can. Have yeah, that in there. And honestly, that's actually feedback that we'll be collecting and getting 
and working with users to change or or not or just to confirm right like i i don't know if as an user i go to someone's dashboard if i click would i expect it to open the app or to open the editor it, right. it will probably depend right the, the, what the user is so those type of things we will have to work with the ux team but uh, so far this is really really amazing when when does and this go live? Sorry, it's Martin. live. It is live. Now. It is live. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just noticed he was serving from localhost. That's yeah, why I was like asking. Yeah. Dev, but yeah, but there's yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's it's all live dev and prod. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and Fabio, you're probably about to say what I was going to say next. So Fabio, the younger. So <laughs> I are you going to mention anything about generation? <laughs> oh no, I'm going to mention collections. <laughs> oh, okay. No. Yeah. Um, just. Uh, this is like a very early stages. I think I started working on it maybe a day and a half ago. Um, but Alex, you have plenty of uh, projects in your in your account, and sometimes it gets a little bit uh, cumbersome to try to search everything. So this is kind of like what I've been working on. If you want me to share, yeah, yeah, yeah. And mind you, this is like a. How shall I call it? A backend focused person work, working on the front end. <laughs> so, I what I really like, just as an aside, is that we're starting oh. to see, you know, PSDC coming out in our community call. I think that's very important as well. So, bravo team for turning up and telling us all these things. So this is like a basic. Like I said, I I have started styling it today. Uh, and it doesn't fit exactly the mock-up that we have, but thanks to to awesome work that Alex has done on the front end, it's uh, it's pretty easy to just uh, generate the um, the component for it anyway. Uh, we can kind of change the number of things. Obviously, if we have fifty, there's loads. Um, by default, you you see twenty because uh, that's what kind of fills your laptop screen kind of um and then you can go back and forth and see things um, nice <clears throat> what is the big lorem ipsum i have to ask which one the big lorem ipsum you had uh on on the front page mm -hmm. uh, the big lorem ipsum oh that one. Oh, i think this one was we're testing Huge pages and uh, uh, oh, this I, I don't remember. It was something about well. the white space. I think it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, great stuff! I know of at least one user who would really appreciate uh, this update, uh, Fabio. Uh, he's going to be so relieved. Um, one of the things that we talked about actually um, with said user was the ability to be able to. Um, enforce that you're only allowed to delete one project at a time just so that we know it's going to take that person at least four weeks to delete all the uh, <laughs> projects or perhaps we should be kind and introduce some way where you can tick select all delete and so on and so forth that I, think, I think we should have it so when you click delete you have to type in the project name to delete it mm. and then that's the only way to do it so that that basically keeps that particular user josh mentioning no names busy for at least six months deleting his projects that he's got yeah yeah but also i guess following up on what you were going to say martin um we're also looking into adding two new features we already have the back end for it but we don't have front end for it yeah so we'll uh that's kind of like next thing in the in the down the line i guess uh will be the possibility to add a project to favorite or more than one projects to favorites. And um, Martin, Alex, and I, we were on a call, and Alex was like, how about we give the possibility to add projects to a collection, uh, since we were balancing ideas of what can we do to make the dashboard a little bit nicer and more discover discoverable, yeah. I guess. <laughs> That's good because uh, and different... we thought about the, sorry, go on. That That's good, because I know that teachers when they have like a project for class X, class Y, class Z, whatever the, honestly, they would love that because uh, yeah. I've seen so many teachers sort of faffing about with trying to find where their code is 
at the beginning of a lesson. And it only takes like 30 seconds for a class to just, they're off with the fairies because you've not held their attention. So um, anything that helps discoverability for, for, for teachers, at least, is, is definitely a good thing. It's so great to see this sort of stuff coming out of, uh, of PyScript.com because, you know, it's you know it, it complements all the stuff that's going on in the open source world and uh, as we all know when we want to demo anything with PyScript uh, we just go to PyScript.com and it just works and it's it's awesome so um, you know thank you very much to the team for, for, for making our lives so much easier Andrea has his hand up Andrea go for it actually um, I have to drop the mic there. Um, there are a few cases where I've seen not not PyScript.com related issues, but um, the fact that the web works in a different ways when it comes from the iframes. <clears throat> we have iframes. Um, there are a lot of uh, things that we should probably improve in there if it's possible, because I don't know if it's even possible. Um, I have a perfect use case I would like to show you, but I don't know if I have time for it. Yeah, go for it. Uh, it go for it. This is a okay. short call. Okay, this is a short call. Um, am I? Is it okay to show what? Partially what I showed before uh, in the meeting because it was uh, like a sketchy thing that I tried to make and uh, If you're happy if to okay. share it then share it I'm happy to share it. Yeah um, Right So Hopefully can you see my screen we can see all of ourselves. Yes Yeah, so this is one thing I've been hacking around. Um, it's not final, it's not defined, it's nothing like that. But at the moment, um, I don't care about regular uh, PyScript things that might not work in an iframe. How can I do these? That's an issue. And the moment I do these, that's an issue because we have some privilege that is not working on the iframe. Um, this is a huge privilege because uh, I'm connecting and the advice um, just turned off. Apparently, give me a second. I'm so connecting this is, this to a device. USB serial, isn't it? Yeah, I'm connecting to a device that's supposed to show up, and when I try to do that on Pascal or iframe. It never works. When I connect, when I click, they reveal the thing on uh, on actually uh, my own account. So this this is this is the namespace. It works. It works like a shot. So I can show you an hello world in here. Um, that's it. <laughs> so that's that's the thing. And when I do this, and and I go back here and I can click, just click. Um, it's a bit upsetting, not from the technical point of view, because I mean, iframes, there are limitations. But from a user perspective, I want just to see my thing and my connect to a thing uh, in here. And I don't know, because I didn't investigate that. <laughs> I don't know why this should fail on serial access because I'm on a um, trusted domain and, and everything else. So yeah. I hope there are, um, I don't know, maybe I should file a bug. Uh, what I've seen is that once I click here, everything works. But in here, not everything works. And that's the thing that is driving me crazy because sometimes I want to be able to show a demo without the console log opened, and I want just to connect, and nothing happens, and I think maybe it's me, or maybe it's something else. So out of out of the blue, I'm wondering, is there any way we can show to users, please use the URL so that you, you, you can understand what's going on, what's working, and what's not? Because I think with iframes, there are limitations that 
we might not be able to um, mm. but we might be able to catch errors in there and tell the user I'm afraid you need to run this thing in the whole URL otherwise your browser just bails out um, that's that's it for me Fabio you had your hand up very patiently <laughs> You're, you're muted, by the way, matey. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. Just to... Well, Martin or the team, do you want to address the question, uh, this, the, the, the point first, and then I can chime in? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when, uh, on the iframe, there's certain allow attributes that we have on there, and it's, probably, it's likely just missing one of those allow serial. Um, I'm hoping that's all it is, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into it, and if it's and if it's just that simple, uh, we could probably have a fix for out oh, this week for that. Is is there not an allow all, or do you have to enumerate each of those permissions to allow them? What is that? What was the is question? There, is there not an allow all, or or do you have to enumerate uh, each of those permissions? Otherwise, you've got a massive long list of permissions you're going to have to find from somewhere, which I don't envy you. Um, so. Yeah, I believe there is an allow all. Um, Kind of, but I, I'm, my only worry about that is like security issues. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah, certain yeah. ones you might not want. Yeah. 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 Okay. Fabio? Yeah. So my comment on top of that as, was actually yes, plus one on that, or actually adding, like, adding a feedback, big and red. This uh, errors on iframe um, open, open the. Um, on a different tab, especially if I think we should be smart about it. And the ones that we know are issues, we put a nice message and we say, this is not working because it's on an iframe open here. And gener general errors, I would still put, hey, there's an error on the page. It might be related to iframe. Um, and the more we, depending on the type of error, uh, of course, but just helping with the user experience, I think it's super important. The other thing too, that actually I was talking with uh, Martin this past few days is that we really, really, really need to start capturing those things uh, and, and putting into uh, the data set so that we can build some insights and intelligence. And we, we are, how many people had the same issue before Andrea uh, pointed that out, right? Uh, we shouldn't be having those that visibility from these calls we should have this visibility from our dashboard saying oh shit like there's a ton of users having issues with the iframe because of this let's address the, the problem so um yeah i think there are two motions there one is uh, a band-aid basically fixing the thing with error messages the other is trying to actually do a more uh, intense cure and, Fabio, and as a British person, when you mentioned Band Aid, I just think of Bob Geldof in the eighties. So, uh, and then I realised that Band Aid is what British people call a plaster. So, sticking plaster. So there we go. <laughs> no way. Hold on, hold on. That that's a uh, today I learned. So in UK, you don't say Band Aid. No. Bandage. Sticking plaster. <laughs> nice. Band, okay, Band Aid is Feed the World, you know, 1984, the Ethiopia thing. Um, anyway, Martin is incredibly patient. So, Martin. Um, I do wonder about this. So, obviously, so I just <clears throat> had a quick look as we were talking there, right, with the overlords about uh, web serial and iframes, right? And one of the issues is the, the origin, right? The fact that we've got, you're on PyScript.com, but your app is running on PyScriptApps.com. Right, which is the way that we've always had this split, and I just I've always wondered this, right? Which how do how do things like Replit and those things use? Is that a sensible split for this? Is just I'm just throwing the question out there. I'm not expecting answers, but like, why do we need a separate origin to serve the apps from? I, I've often wondered that myself. Anyway, Fabio the younger. I think this might also go into the conversation that you mentioned that we we might need to revisit some of the architecture changes or arch architecture choices we've made. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. So this this will be a bigger debate, but I do wonder whether we've 
because we how many times do we have problems and it's like oh it's the iframe <laughs> it's like it's, it's like there be dragons fabio muted, muted fabio sorry yes i was just saying sorry uh, i gotta go but uh yeah those are all good things martin we can sync on on prioritization yeah. and stuff yeah but, well, all so right. very, very, very... Ciao, ciao. i also oh. have another meeting unfortunately yes exactly so um all those who have, you need to go off you better go uh and uh, thank you very much for turning up i'm going to stop the recording now unless there's anything else that we need to talk about which i don't think there is so um uh, let me just stop